Tech who's preparing the roads this morning for a possible wintry mix tomorrow. Jonathan Goto is live with what you need to know. Do you plan on hitting the roads? And a daring rescue caught on camera in the Bronx, New York. A woman trapped under a couch after her apartment building explodes. What officials say happened in your morning headlines with our David Sears. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. We are here in Lot C of the Alamo Dome. Testing already underway. We're going to explain what you need to know before you head out here. Katie. Hey, hi. <laughs> hi. Good morning. We are at Sarah King Elementary, part of SAISD. It's time for another Katie Science Lab on the road. I'm minus my partner today. But we've got an excited group of fifth graders. We are going to make a cloud in a jar. That is coming up. See you in a bit. A Judson ISD school is giving free clothes to students and families in need. Coming up, how you can help. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, San Antonio! And good morning to all the smiling faces over at Hebner Elementary. It is Wednesday, January 19th. We have a jam-packed hour for you. Yes, we do. And don't let the temperatures right now fool you. Those will change pretty soon. Let's go outside right now with live cam. It's been a foggy, misty morning in many parts of the area. What's the latest out there, Justin? Well, we, we are still dealing with a little bit of fog. You see outside right now, it's not as bad as it was earlier, so that's the good news. Fog will slowly lift. We'll get rid of the clouds some sun this afternoon. It's, it's going to be a warm day, but we we know those changes are on our doorstep. Let's first start with the visibility, though. It is down as you get out towards Hondo and Castroville, traveling down Highway 90. There is going to be some thicker fog here in San Antonio. Not so much an issue, just some cloudy skies at the moment. Visible satellite picture shows where some of those clouds are stretching here across Bear County. 64 at the airport, 62 Boulevard, 58 in Kerrville, 56 in Uvalde. It's actually a fairly warm, humid morning. Here's what we're watching, though. That cold front, that strong cold front will be in the Hill Country by 4 to 6 p.m. It'll be here in San Antonio, I'd say somewhere around 8 p.m. and through the rest of the area by 10 p.m. to around midnight. Gusts of 40 miles per hour as this front comes through, northerly winds, an abrupt temperature change, and then we'll be talking about that potential for a wintry mix tomorrow. There is a winter weather watch in effect, winter storm watch in effect for the entire area in anticipation of some slick bridges and overpasses because of uh, the potential for a little bit of freezing rain sleet uh, and maybe a little bit of snow mixed in there, not necessarily here in San Antonio. We're going to get into all that here in just a little bit. Forecast for today, we get up to 78, mostly sunny, but by 8 p.m. here comes that front turning colder and windy. We'll talk much more about this winter weather potential coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Justin, thank you. Quick look at the roads with Transguide this morning. There was a look at Loop 410 now at Highway 281 and Hildebrand. Things are moving right now, but again, we were preparing for big changes in the weather. That's right. Stephen Cavazos is helping us keep an eye on the roads this morning, by the way. Have you seen crews at all yet, Stephen? Not yet. Not yet. All right, thank you very much. Happening right now, speaking of TxDOT crews, they are taking advantage of this warm weather for now to prepare for tomorrow's possible wintry weather. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live and good morning, Jonathan. Do we know what areas that they're looking to pre-treat? Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Mark. Well, I'm located right now off of I-35 northbound near Cibolo. This is an area that we know Texas is going to be targeting. As we know, they'll be focusing on major routes such as highways and really targeting those bridges that we know are known to freeze over and make for dangerous driving conditions. They also say they'll be focusing on and pre-treating the northwest portion of I-10 between Loop 1604 including both and going through both counties, Kerr and San Angelo. Now also from Loop 1604 and the north side and the I-35 north of Loop 1604 through Comal County. Now we're told those crews will be using a brine solution in an effort of keeping roadways from freezing over. Now Texas strongly advising the public to stay off the roads, but if you have to be out, of course, drive with extreme caution. Slow down and maintain at least three times the normal following distance and use extra caution on bridges ramps and overpasses as they are known to freeze first and very important to keep in mind if your vehicle starts to slide ease off the gas 
the pedals and the brakes, steer into the direction of the skid until you have regained traction, then of course, straighten out your vehicle. Now, Mark, Stephanie, those crews, again, are expected to be trickling out this direction, I-35 northbound and those other areas within the next hour. Now, this is an operation that we're going to be following closely. We'll keep you updated with the latest. Reporting live from I-35 northbound, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Jonathan, thank you. Turning to the coronavirus now, the COVID-19 positivity rate still rising in Bear County. Metro Health says it now stands at 38%. Hospitalizations also going up. Nearly 1,200 people fighting the virus from a hospital bed here. About 250 of those are in ICU. More than 100 are on ventilators. Metro Health is reporting an average of more than 6,000 new cases a day in the past seven days. Federally funded COVID testing up and running right now at the Alamo Dome. Already more than 100 people getting their tests this morning. Max Messi joins us live. And Max, how long does it take for each test? Guys, I got to tell you, it is super efficient out here. People are driving up, it honestly, taking about five minutes between they pull up and when they're out of here. And I got to say, if you are looking to get a test, right now is the perfect time to do it. There are six bays open, and as you can see, only three cars out here. Joined here live with the assistant director of Metro Health. So what does the logistics look like? Um, logistics is pretty simple. Uh, if you need an appointment, we, we prefer uh, you get an appointment to get tested. Uh, you can log in at uh, I, I do need COVID-19 test.com or there's a phone number to call, which is 1-800-635-8611. You can call this number or go to the website and get registered to get an appointment. The goal is to have up to 1,200 uh, tests by appointments, but we do have an option to accommodate walk-ins as well. So it is pretty simple. Get an appointment. If you get an appointment, it's like, like you've already mentioned, it's pretty quick. You're in and out. And Mark and Stephanie just talked about these are federally funded tests. So what does the need look like here in San Antonio for testing? So we've had three surges in the past. We are currently in the fourth surge. And at the peak of our previous surges, we used to test anywhere from 8,500 to 9,000 tests per day. Currently, we are, we are, ha we are averaging about 11,600, upwards of 11,600 tests per day. So the demand for testing has gone up tremendously. And this is one site um, that, that we can accommodate that very high testing demand. When people come in, they get their test. When they should, when should they expect results? So typically, you should have results back by 48 to 72 hours. But like I said, because of the sheer volume of tests that we are seeing per day, expect some added delays. Uh, up to 96 hours is, is quite possible. All right, doctor, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Guys, open from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. And remember, if you want to get an at-home test, you can order those from the federal government. We have instructions to do so right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Mark, Stephanie, back to you guys. All right, thank you, Max. In your morning headlines, the investigation continues today into why three teenagers are dead outside of a Outside of Houston, an amazing video of a daring rescue while a house is burning. And just a reminder of what can happen. You're driving too fast and hit an icy patch. David Sears is here. Good morning. I think we need a reminder with what's coming tomorrow. Yeah. So we'll have that for you in just a second. But first, you are looking at two homes surrounded by a farm. One of those homes is surrounded by crime scene tape. You can see right there. The scene is in Crosby, Texas. That's just northeast of Houston. And it is a tragic scene inside the home. Two girls and one boy found dead all appear to be under the age of 18. One family lives on the farm in both of those houses. The bodies were found yesterday afternoon by family members living in the other house. So far, the evidence leads investigators to believe one gun was used to commit a double murder homicide. They are still looking for a connection between the teens. Once we put the pieces together, motive is always something that tends to reveal, reveal itself at some point, and sometimes it makes no sense. These are all senseless at the end of the day. When you're talking about the loss of life of young people, uh, it's tragic. These are always highly charged, very emotional. We understand that. You know, our condolences go out to the family. The medical examiner is working to identify the three bodies and the exact cause of death. You are watching NYPD body cam footage of a daring rescue in the Bronx. You can see the house on fire right there. See the flames coming out of that window right there. As the first responders get closer, the flames get bigger and they get hotter. And then there comes the daring rescue. The neighbors could hear screams from inside. So the first responders make their way into the burning house. They can hear some screams coming from one of the rooms and it's from under a couch. Over here, over here. Ten six, we're inside. 
Absolutely incredible. The big fear the building was going to collapse while they were trying to save that woman. They are able to get her out of the building and to safety, and she survived. One person actually said there's somebody still inside, and we went inside immediately, and we could hear the person screaming, help, help, help. We could hear her, but we couldn't identify where exactly she was until we jumped into the living room that was actually submerged. What was going through my head was just helping people because that's what I signed up for. For a minute, we thought about the building collapsing, but then we said, you know, we got to get this lady out of here. No doubt some heroes right there. Another woman was injured and a third woman actually died at the scene. Five of those officers did suffer minor injuries. The fire was caused by a gas explosion. OK, with the weather, we are about to experience drivers. Pay attention. Here comes a car. Hit some icy patches and then look out. Bam, just kind of warning you for the slowdown tomorrow. This guy was doing about 60 down the street in Detroit. The ice was caused by a water main break. The driver, okay, but he took out a front of a business. When we saw the video, we didn't know what to expect. The driver wasn't hurt. The driver ran away, actually. This happened about 5.40 a.m. New windows, new gates. Roughly over, over, over 25,000 more or more. So Justin and the weather team have been telling us for the last several days, you can expect some freezing maybe on some overpasses and some bridges and some of those big tall flyovers. So there, there's your warning right there. That could happen if you're not paying attention tomorrow. So pay attention when you're on the road. Slow down. Very Watch scary. for those little icy patches. We are ready. I yeah. think we're ready. I think yeah. we're ready. I hope we are. Okay. Thank you, David. End up like that guy. Yes, oh, sir. I hope not. <laughs> Thank you. Time right now, 909, about 63 degrees. Still ahead. Tiffany Wessos is live at Justin ISD with details on a unique boutique that is helping students look their best in the hallways. And later, we're checking with Katie Blake live at King Elementary. She has a fifth grade class ready to learn about making a cloud in a jar. 13 the pandemic has placed many families in a tight spot financially and for some parents buying clothes and other items for the children can be tough. A group at a Judson ISD school is giving a helping hand to those in need by providing free items, but they need your help as they relaunch their program. Tiffany Wertis is live from Spring Meadows Elementary with more on their unique boutique. Good morning. Good morning. You know, as the cold weather rolls in, students need warm clothing items. And just check this out. Here at Hawk Boutique, students can get free winter coats, sweaters, and several other items. The boutique launched a few years ago due to COVID. They had to stop for a few months, but now the boutique is relaunching and the school is collecting several items. To talk more about this, we have counselor Carol Horton. Good morning. Talk to us about this boutique and how it initially started. Oh my God, well, you're right. It was it started about two and a half, maybe two years before the pandemic hit. And um, our previous administrator was really excited about bringing in the community as well as family, well, families and students and the community so that they could shop in a very safe place um, with dignity to be able to pick out clothes and stuff for everybody um, to wear for school, for back to school. Um, we noticed that we had a very high economically disadvantaged student population. So this really, really helps out. What items can we find here? You can find anything from sweatpants to um, undergarments. We have a lot of brand new items that we get donated. We have shoes. We have clothing for adults as well. So we had some parents come in. We had a family that came in from a different city. They had to leave. It was a very challenging moment for them. And the day that they came in to register, we um, brought them back here and they went home with a bunch of um, nice little items. That's incredible. Yeah, it was wonderful. It was really wonderful. So right now you all are relaunching this. Um, talk to us about what type of items people can donate. Uh, anything. We have handbags, belts, and <laughs> we have a jewelry. Some, some people donated jewelry, but anything that can help. Um, we're looking for um, even babies all the way to adults. We have some family members that use it for work and um, interviews. So pretty much anything will help us out. Awesome. What a great program. We're going to have more details on this coming up on the noon show. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Tiffany. Quick update on the Bastrop State Park area fires. As of uh, just a short time ago, we are hearing that that fire is now 30% contained. And over 700 acres burned at this point.
That's the latest. Let's go now to Justin, who's back with more on what we think could happen in the next, and it's going to be a quite eventful next 12 to 24 hours, is it not? It's going to be a wild swing in temperatures, that's for sure. And I think tomorrow, yes, uh, we are going to see some wintry weather, at least some light wintry weather around the area. Let's first start by going outside. You see visibility has improved. Uh, we still do have cloudy skies of 63. South southwesterly winds at about 8. Two point is at 60. A lot of humidity shoved in here out ahead of this uh, storm system and that cold front that'll be moving in tonight. Visibility still down some Castroville to Hondo, although we are seeing some improvement here. Same story around Carrizo Springs, although Catula still close to zero. I suspect these numbers will uh, be rising soon, but we are still left with some cloudy skies. You see the clouds there that have built in. These, these will erode. But it probably takes till about lunchtime for that to happen. So it's going to be cloudy until then. 63 degrees at the airport, 57 Uvalde, 57 Rock Springs, 58 in Kerrville, 64 in Gonzales. With a little bit of sun there, you see the dew points. Man, these really jumped up into the 60s, and that's why we saw the fog this morning. Here is the forecast for today. We get clearing around noontime. We jump into the 70s. We do see sun today, 78, the forecast high temperature. That cold front, at least here in San Antonio, forecast arrived by 8 p.m. With it, there's an outside chance for shower, but I really think most of that will be to our east, and temperatures fall off abruptly, and then it turns very windy. That cold front right now is up across parts of North Texas. It's 32 in Amarillo, 41 Lubbock, 44 in Wichita Falls, and those winds are picking up just behind that front. There's also a dry line here, which really doesn't do a whole lot for a forecast other than it will draw in some drier air from the west, which will boost temperatures today. So that's that big swing we're talking about close to 80 this afternoon. Tomorrow will be in the 30s all day. Uh, so what a change, right? Uh, as we look at the forecast or we look at the big picture here, uh, there is some snow up across parts of the Texas Panhandle where temperatures are now cold enough. And you see some light showers here stretching from uh, central Texas over towards Dallas Fort Worth. Winter storm watches are now in effect for parts of South Texas. And what is incredible about this is these watches go all the way down to deep South Texas. It is possible that late uh, tomorrow night there could be some wintry weather in places like McAllen, Laredo. So this is going to be so widespread south of San Antonio as well. Here is the future cast. That front again arrives around 8 o'clock with it some showers and storms generally to our east. Then northerly winds kick in, and then tomorrow morning, here we go. We start to see some precipitation as some energy moves in. Initially, we're probably going to get some sleet, some freezing rain in the hill country. Some of that may switch over to snow. Here around San Antonio, it'll be light, but it looks like we could get some sleet mixing in by midday. And any of those bridges and overpasses could start to become a little slick. Even into the afternoon, we're still dealing with that possible mix. By 7 p.m., Energy starts to move south, but notice we could get some snow, some sleet, places like Laredo and Corpus Christi. That's moving south into deep south Texas, which is why those watches are down there. Uh, and it will be cold, very cold Friday morning here in San Antonio. I think mostly here in town we're looking at a sleet event, and that's because we'll have a little bit of no a nose of some warmer temperatures aloft, and that will melt uh, what's above and then it refreezes as it gets a little bit closer to the ground. So that's the main uh, precipitation I think we see here in San Antonio. Again, there could be a little bit of snow in the hill country and even a little bit of snow to our south. And I can't rule out a few snowflakes here in town, but again, sleet I think is the main issue. Uh, maybe some freezing rain as well. So plan for 30s tomorrow, wind chills in the 20s. We're watching for that icy glaze on some of the bridges and the overpasses. And wind chills, by the way, tomorrow morning in the 20s. So yes, a very abrupt change. We'll see freezing temperatures Friday morning and Saturday morning as well. And some more chances for rain show up Sunday into Monday. We'll keep tabs on that as well. But we'll be here for you uh, all day today, tomorrow. And we'll be sending out those push alerts as well, guys. All right, Justin, bracing for the cold. Yes. Thank you, Justin. Thank you so much. 920, about 63 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, we're checking back in with Katie Blake live at King Elementary as she gets ready for today's science experiment. Katie Science Lab back on the road this morning. She's over at Sarah King Elementary in SAISD with a group of fifth graders. Hey, good morning, Katie. What's today's science experiment? Good morning, you guys. Happy to be here with Miss Sims class. But before we get started, I want to point out that Miss Sims was so excited to set this up for her students. She and I were emailing back and forth talking about what activity we were going to do. Unfortunately, Miss Sims couldn't be here today. 
but I wanted to give her a shout out because she was just named Teacher of the Month. You guys knew that, right? Yeah. That is a big deal. So, hi, Miss Sims. We miss you. We wish you could be here today, but we're going to have a whole lot of fun, and I've got Miss Maine here to help us out. So what we're doing today is we're making a cloud in a jar. And this is a call out to something that these students have already learned about the, the water cycle here. So what we're going to be doing is in our little mason jar, we're going to be seeing the processes of evaporation, condensation, forming a cloud taking place right before our eyes. This is pretty cool. So I'm going to get my hot water here. That is something that we will definitely need. And I'm going to walk us through our activity for today. So we've got a jar. We've got some blue food coloring already in there. I'm going to pour the hot water. You guys, that totally is red, but I, it had the blue lid on it, but it's red, but it's fine. It's totally cool. We're gonna roll with it. This is what happens when I don't have my assistant David here. We got the wrong food coloring. Anyway, I'm gonna spray my hairspray on there and then really quickly put the lid on. So what's starting to happen here is that hot water is starting to evaporate. So it's changing its phase from a liquid to a gas. a gas, all right? So that's what's starting to happen. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a couple of ice cubes on the top of our mason jar. Now that looks kind of weird, right? Why would we do that? Well, that cooler air here at the top of our lid now because of the ice cubes, that's what's starting the process of condensation. And condensation is turning from a gas to a, a liquid. So what does the hairspray have to do with it? Well, the hairspray, little molecules in the hairspray, that's what our liquid, as, it's, as we're having the condensation happen, the liquid is gonna glob on to the hairspray molecules. And that is what allows us to actually see our cloud forming here. And you'll be able to see it when it's right in front of your face, but we've got our cloud forming and you can kind of see it moving around just a little bit. So we're gonna get started with our first group so they can kind of see it up close. But in just a little bit, we're gonna come around to everybody's group and get it started, okay? So that's kind of what we're doing. You're seeing kind of the water cycle happen right before your eyes. All right, you guys ready? All right. So I apologize, we have the red food coloring. It had the blue lid, so I thought it was blue, but it's red, but that's okay. So be ready to spray. There goes your water, and this is really hot. So if you ever do this at home, make sure you have a parent around, because this is really hot. Yeah, kind of spray it around. All right, wait, perfect. Good job, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna bring you your ice now. All right, so our evaporation is going, so I'm gonna put a few of these ice cubes on here. And it may take a minute or so for you to kind of see the, the cloud forming, but it'll happen and you'll be able to see it kind of moving around just a little bit in there, yeah. So at the very end, we're gonna remove the lid and you'll actually be able to see what looks like fog coming out of your jar. All right, cool. So this is our example group. They did a great job. Yeah, you can kind of see it swirling around in there, right? That's cool, that's cool. So when we check in with you guys in just a few minutes, we're gonna help the rest of the class make their own cloud in a jar. This is very fitting. This is pretty cloudy outside, right? <laughs> but we've got our own clouds in here. Uh, we'll check in with you guys in just a little bit. That's awesome, Katie. I think you maybe used the red because of Texas Tech? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, sure, sure I did. It was a plan. All right, well, it's super visual. Yeah. Thank you, yes. thank you, Katie. There's more head on GMSA at nine. The Spurs making a trade. David and RJ have a look at that and an apology from Dak Prescott. Well, first, look at some of the top stories we're following in San Antonio this morning. Top stories we're following today. San Antonio police trying to piece together an overnight shooting incident on the city's far west side. It began around 2.30 this morning outside Loop 1604 on Culebra Road near Alamo Parkway. Police say a man in his early 20s was taken to the hospital with a gunshot wound to the leg. Officers say it happened in a wooded area behind an apartment complex. And a victim has not given police a whole lot of information. Investigators say they found a backpack filled with drugs behind an apartment building.
Also new this morning, a scary scene for a driver who had to be cut loose from his vehicle on the north side of town. It happened around 1030 last night on 281 North and Bitters Road. Police say the driver in his 30s jumped the median, causing the vehicle to roll. He was taken to the hospital and is OK. Officers say alcohol was not a factor in the crash. Well, it's warm out there right now, but not for long. TxDOT crews taking advantage of this time by making sure roads and highways are prepared for any potentially wintry weather tomorrow. Our Jonathan Cotto has been on the roads all morning and has what you need to know. Good morning. Good morning, Stephanie. Well, I'm located off of I-35 northbound near Cibolo, where we know it's an area that these crews are going to be pre-treating in advance of tomorrow's weather. Now, their main focus is going to be those major routes, right? Highways such as this, and of course, targeting those bridges that are known to freeze over and make for dangerous driving conditions. Texas Todd says they'll also be targeting the northwest portion of I-10 between Loop 1604 including uh, both counties, Kerr and San Angelo counties, excuse me, also from Loop 1604 and the north side and to I-35 north of Loop 1604 through Comal County. And we're also told those we're also told those crews will be using a brine solution in an effort of keeping roadways from freezing over. Texas strongly advising the public to stay off the roads, but if you have to be out, of course, drive with extreme caution. Now, it's important to note you have to slow down and maintain at least three times the normal following distance and use extra caution on bridges, ramps, and overpasses as they are known to freeze first. Very important to keep in mind if your vehicle starts to slide, ease off the gas pedal or brakes. Steer to the direction of the skid until you have regained traction. Then, of course, straighten out your vehicle. Now, Mark, Stephanie, crews are out on the roadways as we speak. They are alerting drivers to slow down and give crews space as they prepare for tomorrow's winter weather. Reporting live from I-35 northbound, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, we're hoping it doesn't come to that, but it's always uh, better to be safe than sorry. Lots of clouds out there. Justin is back with an update. Hey there, guys. Hey, it is... Uh, kind of cloudy this morning. We started off with some fog. The fog for the most part is lifted, at least here around San Antonio. The clouds will take a little bit longer. We'll get some sun today and then those abrupt changes tonight. Visibility, really it's improving. Hondo and Castroville, we've seen some improvements. It's uh, Catula and Creso Springs are two areas that are still seeing some fairly thick fog. You can see on the satellite picture where those clouds sort of ended up this morning. New Braunfels, San Antonio, Hondo, Uvalde, down to Creso Springs where uh, there is some of that fog being reported. These clouds will break apart. That sun comes out and we'll get temperatures in the upper 70s today. It's going to be fairly warm. 63 degrees right now, 65 Gonzales, 67 in Victoria, 58 currently in Kerrville. Here's the timeline for today. We take it all the way up to 78 degrees, mostly sunny by 4 o'clock. Those changes, I think, here in San Antonio arrive about 8 p.m. And you'll notice it. Cold front comes through, turning colder. There's a very small chance for shower with this front, but the wind is really going to kick up some gusts of 40 miles per hour possible. So the timing here, it starts to move into the, the, the hill country, that cold front, around 4 to 6 p.m. Here in San Antonio, I'd say between 7 and 9 and through the rest of the area by midnight. And then, of course, we start to see a little bit of moisture tomorrow, which brings in some of those concerns. Everything's going to be light, but we're going to talk more about where we expect some of that and how long it'll last coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Justin will be listening. And here's a look out at the Trans Guy cameras. There's Loop 410 at Culebra Road, some normal build up there, and I-37 at Houston. And the first player on the move after a trade late last night. David is back with RJ to break down this deal for the Spurs and what it means moving forward for our team. All right, David. I don't know. Came in last, late last night, yeah. I, I don't know a, what this deal does. Report. <laughs> <laughs> it means that one of the Spurs sharp shooting three pointer guys is gone. Yep, that guy there right is. there, Brins Forbes, is now playing for the Denver Nuggets, so he's got a much better chance at going deep into the playoffs. And they got him mm -hmm. because he can shoot the three and make the three at 41% or 42% this year, I guess. Yeah, he, he can definitely do that. So, of course, Bryn Forbes was with the Spurs uh, prior to this season. He was with Milwaukee last year, won a championship there, came back. So they had just signed him yeah. on a one year deal, and Bryn is now headed to the Mile High City there. It's a good move for Denver. Uh, now, in return, we get Juancho Hernan Gomez, David. I know that's the, famed this Hernan one up. the famed Hernan Gomez brothers yeah, in the NBA. There, there's several of them, and he's one of them. Mm -hmm. um, he, well, let's see. He gets paid $6 million this year, so I don't know how much of the Spurs 
are going to have how much the of that contract the Spurs are going to have to absorb. He played in 18 games. He averages 1.1 points and yeah. 1.4 rebounds. So not much better than you, actually. <laughs> Just, I, Justin I may know. be able to get out there and get a point. <laughs> and average a point. <laughs> so, oh I, you know, I, I know. I'm not sure uh, about the trade. Can, That's you know a lot what? of money. I'll go out there and hit a bucket for $6 million a yeah. year. <laughs> yeah. I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. Coach. Um, so, yeah, this this deal obviously uh, is, a, is a deal for the Spurs to kind of clear up some cap space there. Again, Forbes' numbers were going to come off anyway. The, the good deal with uh, Hernan Gomez is that he's, it's a two-year deal, but the second year is not guaranteed. So, so they're going to yeah. probably waive him. I mean, and I, it's you know, always they about get a money. decent kind so. of look at him. But only 18 games this year with yeah. Boston. He's six kind nine. Of. Justin's six four. I mean, Justin can get one point. You can get one. So, but uh, yeah, and uh, I doubt we'll see a lot of action from this guy. Yeah. But you know. What it could mean we'll is that uh, we could see more of Josh Primo because I think Primo be was behind Bryn Forbes. So we could be getting a little bit more uh, Primo picks, Primo power Real coming power, here to so. San Antonio. <laughs> All right, let's yeah. uh, let's get on to Well, before we leave the Spurs, mm-hmm. Becky Hammond, we understand, is now in protocol. That's why yeah. she wasn't on the on the bench. Uh, I guess it was last, uh, two nights ago. Versus Phoenix. Yes. Versus right. Phoenix, yeah. and she won't yeah. be on the bench probably tonight when they uh, take on Oklahoma City. Yeah, right. probably uh, got to wait a, so. about a week or so until yeah. she gets back. All right, gets Let, let's get to this next one. Mm. Dak Prescott has finally, through Twitter, <laughs> apologized for those comments he made about the referees. And here, here's the interesting thing. Mm-hmm. The NBA referees came out before Dak even came out, and they pretty much condemned him. I mean, they, they yeah. came out with a pretty – pretty harsh statement. They condemned the comments by Dak Prescott condoning violence against game officials. As an NFL leader, he should know better. We encourage the NFL to take action to discourage this deplorable behavior in yeah, the future. Wow. Okay. The NBA refs coming at yeah. Dak. That was it interesting. Yeah, strong. We hadn't even really heard from the NFL whether he'd be fine, but uh, I believe we have the apology here that Dak posted on Twitter. Yeah, it says he deeply regrets the comments he made regarding the officials, uh, and he said that he was caught up in the emotion, of mm-hmm. course, and that he holds the NFL officials <laughs> to the highest regard and uh yeah he said that of course it's a safety matter uh for everyone at the game the players officials and the fans as well not to be thrown yeah that was a mistake on my behalf and i am sorry so the good news is he's come out and apologized Mm -hmm. for that i I still don't know why he would would even do it in a post game you think of all people dak would know better than than to say that sort of thing so i i still say the nfl is going to come down on him i think so yeah Yeah, i think so and um again at least he got out there but i'm sure that he was hearing a lot of things from a lot of reaction to those comments on sunday afternoon so there's your sports news of the day spurs tonight oklahoma city 7 30 we'll be back tomorrow with a wrap rj david thank you guys 9 39 about 63 degrees you're watching gmsa at nine and still ahead we're checking back in with katie blake live at king elementary as she gets ready for today science experiment and it's time again katie blake has her fifth grade scientists ready to make a cloud in a jar she's live over at sarah king elementary and saisd katie take it away all right you guys yes so we had our our i call them our guinea pigs earlier show the rest of the class what we're going to be doing and now it's time to make clouds in a jar are you guys ready yeah. All right, Miss Maine and I are going to come around to every group and help you pour the hot water and we'll get going, all right? So, you know, these electric kettles really come in handy. All right, so I'm going to pour your water. Do you know what to do? Spray? You want me to spray? And then you put the lid on, all right? Let's try that. Yeah. So there's our water. Spray. All right, lid. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Very good, very good. I'm gonna try yours. And then, split. <laughs> good job. While we're putting the lids on there, I'm gonna make sure, sorry, Robert, I'm in the way. I'm gonna put our ice, because we've gotta have the ice to make the condensation start to happen. So when our warm, our warm air from our water rises and it meets the ice at the top that's cooler, that's when the condensation begins. See, you can kind of see it swirl in there. So there's your cloud, pretty cool. All right, we got one more, one more at this table. It is hot, isn't it? All right, good job. Let me get you your ice cubes. Yeah, in Miss Sims' class, again, Miss Sims can be here today. We wish she could be here. She was really excited to set this up for her students, but they had been learning about weather, so we thought this was a cool way to show what a cloud 
looks like a puss, all right? All right, go for it. <laughs> good job, good job, good job. Can you spray for me? Yes, I can definitely spray it for you. Here, we're gonna try yours one more time. Oh, there we, oh look. So let that, let that go. Yeah, look, your cloud looks really good. That was, I think, the perfect spray of hairspray. That was really good. Okay, take the lid off. If you can, and you'll kind of see it come out of the jar. It looks really cool. All right, good job. Let's get yours going. Give me the paper challenge. Good job. That looks good. What happened? <laughs> There's your eyes. Wait, what? The camera's off you? You want the hairspray? Okay. Oops, sorry. All right, you ready? There's that. All right. Woo. Good job. All right, let's get yours done. Good job. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so you're in a good spot. So you see your cloud in there? Go ahead and take the lid off and you'll see it kind of come, you'll see it come out. Oh, spooky. Did you know fog is actually a cloud? If you've ever driven through fog in the morning, it's the same thing as a cloud. It's just lower to the ground. Yeah, isn't that cool? Kind of spooky, kind of Halloween-ish. So we are going to finish up here. I've got to boil some. We've got to boil some more water. We've got a few more groups to work with here this morning, but we love doing this. I know David couldn't be here today. We didn't have Miss Sims here, but I really appreciate Miss Maine. She's been helping us out here. Uh, learn a little bit about weather up close, making a cloud in a jar. So Katie Science Lab is now on the road. We're going to be visiting more schools this month, even in February. So if you're a teacher or you know a teacher and you'd like David and I to come visit your classroom, do a little experiment or an activity up close and personal, shoot me an email, kblake at ksat.com, and we'll try to get something worked out because it's just fun to be able to learn and, and do stuff with your hands here with these with these kiddos that are working so hard and kind of a weird school year school environment so we love to come out and do this david we miss you but uh we'll see you next week and from king elementary i will send it back to you guys we've got some more clouds to make so i gotta go i can't okay. hang out i gotta go great job katie all right katie blake live over at king elementary in saisd all right so while katie is making clouds inside <laughs> yeah. you're observing clouds outside and there's a lot of chatter today about what could be chattering teeth tomorrow it, well that's very true and a great explanation there by katie about the, the fog and the clouds and that's exactly what we were dealing with this morning uh, some clouds coming through. This is the time lapse. Uh, there was some fog here in San Antonio. Right now we're just dealing with cloudy skies. 63 degrees. Dew point is at 60. We've got south southwesterly winds at about 8. Brought in a ton of moisture and that's one of the reasons uh, the fog was at least thick in spots. It's not so much anymore. We're seeing a lot of improvement. Even around Carissa Springs and Catula. Remember we just talked to you last half hour. It was close to zero in Catula. Looking better now. I think the fog was here very soon. We still have some cloud cover though we got to get rid of. And that'll take another couple of hours. Once that happens, though, the sun's out, temperatures really jump up, and it, it is going to be a warm January day. 59 Kerrville, 58 Fredericksburg. We're at 63 here in San Antonio, 66 Gonzalo, 61 in Catula. Here's what you can expect. Clarion skies noontime, 2 o'clock, 73, 4 p.m., 78, 6 p.m., we're still in the 70s. But by 8 o'clock, our cold front comes through. It turns colder, windy. Temperatures will drop off into the 60s, but very quickly fall into the 50s and eventually 40s and 30s by tomorrow morning. That front right now sitting up across parts of North Texas, 32 Amarillo, 41 Lubbock, 44 in Wichita Falls. This is just now starting to gain some strength. That colder air from the north really starting to push in now. There's also a dry line. That just means we'll see some slightly drier air this afternoon, which will only help to uh, have temperatures be a little bit warmer uh, later today. Wind gusts, we're already starting to see some gusts close to 37 there in Amarillo. This is a taste of what's to come for us too. We're going to get some gusty winds out of this. I think gusts to 40 possible tomorrow morning and through the day, or at least the first half of the day tomorrow. Our wind gust forecast shows gusts close to 40, 6 a.m. through 8 a.m. So as you go off to work and school tomorrow, you got the wind gusts, you got temperatures in the 30s. You can imagine wind chills would be in the 20s. 
bundle up as you send those kiddos to school tomorrow. And as we look at the water vapor, you can kind of detect a little bit of a twist in the atmosphere right here. So this is an initial piece of energy coming through that's going to help to draw in the colder air. But back out to the west, we've got another little swirl right here that's going to swing through, and that's what's going to give us our precipitation tomorrow on top of that colder air that has already moved into the area. So here's how it times out. 8 p.m., our front is on our doorstep, moves through, gusty winds behind it, and then by 7 a.m. we're already starting to see some precipitation. In the hill country initially, it'll be some freezing rain and sleet, maybe mixing with a little bit of snow early tomorrow morning. I think we have a little better chance of seeing precipitation here in San Antonio midday. This is showing a mix of rain, freezing rain, and maybe some sleet as well. I think sleet's probably our best. Uh, I think that's what uh, we'll most likely see tomorrow as some of this moves in. And keep in mind, sleet formation, we have freezing temperatures above, so everything's ice up here. Falls into a warm layer of air here, and that uh, allows it to melt. And then as it moves into the colder temperatures below, it refreezes. And that's typically uh, how we get sleet. And I think that, uh, again, sleet and freezing rain will be possible even through 4 o'clock. You see some of this purple color here around San Antonio. This all shifts south by the evening hours. It could turn into a little bit of snow as you get down towards Laredo. That'll be interesting to see. And this all pushes down south into the valley uh, overnight and into early Friday morning. So here's what to plan for. 30s tomorrow, wind chills in the 20s as we talked about. Some wintry precip, sleet and freezing rain. And we're going to watch for some icy glazes on those bridges and overpasses, especially the ones that haven't been treated. There will be some slick spots, so be careful out there. 32 tomorrow, 48 though Friday after starting off at 26. We'll see a couple mornings here where we see freezing temperatures Saturday morning too. And the rain chances come back into play Sunday and Monday. We get back into the 50s. We'll be right back. A quick look at the roads with TransGuide right now. Looking at I-10 in Frio and I-10 at Woodlawn, things are moving before our big cold front arrives. Yeah, you know, uh, today is a good day to go outside and uh, cover some of those plants if, uh, if you're still trying to keep them from uh, freezing, those sort of things. Uh, wrap some of those uh, outdoor spigots uh, because temperatures will get chilly, especially Friday morning and Saturday morning. And of course, we're watching for a little bit of light wintry precip coming up tomorrow. It'll be windy. It'll be much, much colder after getting up to 78 degrees today, guys. Well, here's a new spin on New Year, New You uh, from the <laughs> beauty world. <laughs> yeah, and believe it or not, this is from Oscar Meyer. Yeah, they're launching their first ever Baloney-inspired face mask. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so uh, they're in, let's see, it's a uh, face mask by biting holes in Baloney. Oh, that's how you could do it, by yes. biting holes in a normal right, slice. Right, no, right. this is a face mask. A ma real one. A, a real one. Oscar Meyer-inspired face mask. Um, and you can find it on Amazon right now, believe it or not. For, you said for $5? Yeah. Yeah, it $5. rejuvenates your skin while recapturing that childhood joy. Does it smell like <laughs> that's I mean, bologna? My, that's what I couldn't see. I have so many questions. I, uh, game I over if it smells like bologna. <laughs> no right? kidding. Ew. There's silence of lambs jokes in there somewhere about this thing. <laughs> have a great day, guys.